Hello and welcome to, to the final bell. Great to be back again for this week, the exciting week. Footy is back. Only a couple more sleeps until the Cats get underway. We are brought to you again by Panther Tyres. Big thanks to all the team at Panther Tyres for their support right throughout this season. If you need anything for your cars, give the guys at Panther Tyres a call. They'll sort you out. They're fantastic and their support has been much appreciated. We've got a terrific podcast coming up. Mark Witzard, one of the leaders of the Cats, one of the stars, multiple best and fairest winner, is going to join us a little bit later on. We'll get to some of your questions a bit later on in the show. We're going to talk plenty of footy because footy is back. The Cats taking on the Hawks at GMHBA Stadium on Friday night. I know we've all been counting down the days and we're going to try and maybe go through who may or may not be playing. I'm joined by one of my regular members. The other one's about to jump on. Scotty Gallen, Scotland, you're rolling a New York Knicks hat, which I know is going to hurt you because you love your Boston Celtics. But great to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Well, I attended a game earlier this year, so I had to show my support for the very lowly Knicks, and they actually won, so it's positive. <laughs> now, Cameron, we've done an amazing job to get to this point and had so many millions of listeners because now we can actually talk about stuff that matters, which is exciting. We have. We've managed to talk through every bit of isolation, <laughs> got the lowdown on what every player's been up to. But A few funny footy. stories, to be fair, we unearthed. Yeah. But, yeah, it's the real stuff now. Well, you know what we found out, too? A couple of good young characters on the Cats list who hopefully they end up very good footballers because they were ripping young men to have a chat to. I wonder who was at the top of your list, Cameron. Uh, well, I would have thought Chuka Constable. <laughs> we're, we're going to go through the maybe ins and outs of round <laughs> two for the Cats and Chuka's got to be in. I would have now, thought so. Man. Can I reveal something to you? Yes, I was at GMHBA Stadium on Tuesday morning. I was lucky enough to see some training on a pristine conditions. Oh, my Lord. That ground's an incredible nick. And there was one gentleman with a haircut, a bit trimmed hair, wearing the number five Guernsey. And I had to ask a dozen people if it was who I suspected that it was. I Ooh. can confirm Nakaya Cockatoo trained in full match simulation. Ooh, oh, stop. Scotty, I can I'm confirm already... he'll play on Friday night. <laughs> he won't play, but he's there. He's real. No, he's alive. You, ha you had me there for a second. I'm excited enough just that footy's back. If you start saying oh, no. Kaya Cockatoo might not be far away, luckily Stokes, he hasn't yet jumped on our Zoom call. <laughs> we're, uh, he'll we're be all over down. He's, he's somewhere. We know in that cyberspace that Matthew Stokes is somewhere. He so, will try and tell us to settle down and stop moving no. cocky up. I had the great to hear that he's training. It was, about, it was like, who what else? What about another sighting, Jack Stephen? Oh, Jack was there. whispers that he is very, very close to selection, which comes as a surprise. Well, Maybe he just falls short in the end, but how close is he? I, as you know, I'm a body uh, language expert. That's part of my many skills. And Chris Scott was virtually saying, oh, he's close, but I think... We'll take a conservative route. He only missed one and a half weeks of training physically over the stab wound. That's not an issue. It's more the volume of training. He did say Jack was a lot fitter than he was when he played in the JLT game in Colac, where he was one of the Cats' best players. But I think they're looking at the bigger picture in that, you know, we're going to have a pretty hectic couple of months ahead. I think he might miss this week, but he's very close. Well, that's exciting news. Can I throw a couple of little names at you as we go through the possible Correct. team? Um, before we, as I said, Mark Blitzars is going to come later on. I'm sure Blitz will tell us exactly whether or not we're right oh, or wrong. Give true. away all the secrets. Backline, are you feeling that it's looking like this sort of setup? As I do welcome our um, co-host throughout every single podcast, uh, Matthew Stokes. Stokesy, welcome to you. Thank you, Lingy. Just working out how to use a computer again, are you? Or um, what's your excuse for your tardiness? Um, our producer's stuffed up, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Name names, Stokesy, name names. Oh, both of them. They know who they are. <laughs> 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 well, 
We're a united team here. Good to see. The second anything goes wrong, we just throw each other under the bus. Beautifully played, Stokes. Now, Stokes, you just missed my five-minute dedication to seeing the Kaya Cockatoo training on Tuesday. Yep. And looking training good. Training the house down. Training the house down. That's good to hear. I mean, he's uh, he's 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 been been uh, unfortunately uh, missed the last couple of years uh, through injuries, as we all know. But let's just not rush things, Scotty. You know, <laughs> I told you. Well, you a, did say this. I you said know, I told he played you Friday night. Back, Stokes. Pardon? Pardon? I told you he's going to say no. No, I, Scotty. I, I put him up for Friday night. He did a couple of nice things, Stokes. That's all the guy has to do. You know that. Oh, we've got enough. Uh, we've got <laughs> enough soldiers to get past for the first couple of weeks, and then after that, I think uh, we let him loose in the second half of the year. Stokes, we're just about to run through just a possible little makeup of the team for Friday yeah. night because we're all excited. It's it's back. If I put these names to you as a back, I'm going to call it a back seven. I know yep. back six, but then the extra ones. Blitzarbs, the man we're about to chat to, Jack Henry, Tom Stewart, Harry Taylor, because Colin Jasney currently probably unavailable for round two, Zach Tui, Mark O'Connor, and Jordan Clark as a seven defenders. Yep. Likely? Yes. Sounds pretty good to me, Lee. Um, Scott, any other names you'd throw in there? No, I think you're right. I think the the Harry Taylor Colajasny rotation will be what you watch out of that group. I think moving forward, Colajasny's close. Chris Scott said he's probably only one to two weeks away. We we'll probably have to Can be I mindful give... that the the Hawthorne Small Brigade is pretty good. Um, so we need probably some nimble players, a little bit more. Probably you think so. Buse is the other one in that mix. Yeah, I think he comes from the mix when we play certain teams like Hawthorne who have. Um, a small brigade that uh, can be pretty dangerous and, and lively, especially on our on our track. I mean, uh, we all know what it's like to be sm- small and nimble on that field. <laughs> um, Only the very best <laughs> in that <laughs> environment. Uh, and I'm going to give you a six, six midfielders here, running midfielders, not going to include the Ruckman. That's going to be a separate discussion. Dangerfield, yeah. Selwood, Duncan, Parfit, Narkel, Cam Guthrie. Look, that's that's my concern when it comes to our our team. Um, we don't have any um, run and carry players, and that's why I really think it's really important that we play Jack Stevens. Um, our makeup has been very similar for the last two years. Of our, you know, you look at all those names; they're all pretty similar in a sense of what they bring to the table. You've got Mitch Duncan, who's a, probably a little bit of an outside player in a sense of he gives you just brilliant, um, you know foot control when, when it comes to his kicks um, and he can break a game open like he showed against CWS going forward. But we don't, what we don't have um, is that ex, um, a player that can break the lines and that's Jack Stevens. So if he's uh, got uh, any chance of playing, I think we, we throw him in there. I think we, we need that difference uh, in that midfield and that's, um, if you look at the rest of those players, they're all very similar. Is that where we see maybe Jordan Clark in time be more a winger and he's the one who can run and carry... Uh, rather than being down back? Yeah, I think so. I think if you also think of the wingers to their main, a lot of their job is to control the outside wing, as you know. Um, so we kind of need someone that in the middle of the, the contest to be able to spread really quickly and go forward um, and maybe, you know, outwork some of the other midfielders. I think what we've got at the moment is some really strong, um, and you look at Joel Selwood and D- Danger, you know, two of the best, but... What we need is something that's a little bit different. You know, Narks is very similar to Dangerfield. Cam Guthrie is very similar to um, Joel Selwood. Um, so we need someone to be able to spread from the contest, I think. And I think that's the difference that um, Jacko brings to our, to our club and our team is that, that run and carry, spread and, run and, and break lines. All right, Scotty. Fort or Stanley? Again, Chris Scott was hedging his bets. He said the door was open for Stanley. Fort played in round one, played pretty well. They might reward Fort just because he, he impressed in round one. I'm a, I am like Stanley, but I know he only plays well four or five games. If you could stretch that to a dozen, he'd have the job permanently. But I get a feeling they might go Fort on Friday night. That's my feeling as well. Just give him another opportunity. Big preseason. You've got to feel for him a little bit. Supposedly trained the house down all the preseason, got an opportunity round one, was probably going to get four or five weeks to try yeah. and cement the position to his, himself. And then it gets shut down. And now it's back almost a 50 50 call again. But 
I hope he gets another opportunity. It's worth uh, having a look there. Right, I'm going to throw the six forwards at you, Stokesy. Hawk and Sav, the two big boys. Surrounded by last year's combination, I think. Dalhouse, Atkins, Myers and Gaz with Gary Rowan as the seventh. And obviously one of those is always going to be on the bench. But uh, Hawk and Sav, Dalhouse, Atkins, Myers, Gaz. Am I missing someone? No, that's a, that's a pretty good forward line. Um, th- what do you reckon, Scotty? No, I think that's all they've got. I mean, is there Josh another Jenkins line? is unavailable, is that right, Scotty? Yeah, he's got a back injury, tweaked his back, so he's out. But he can't play if Sav's there. I don't think we need three tools. I mean, Rowan plays that leading out of the square guy. I mean, Rowan has to be more consistent. Is there another grind Myers? You know, he jumped out of the... Came from nowhere. Have we got another one in the background we don't know of? I don't know at the moment. But that Fog- would be good. Fogarty the man? He's still a bit injured in his stakes. He's still slowly getting back. No, I think he's been back for a few weeks now, but I think you, you, you go with what's, what's worked and who's yeah. done the job in the past for the first round, especially going into it. I think there's so many unknowns that, um, that we go with what's worked. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's a pretty good forward line. I think, we, like you said, Gary Rowan needs to probably a little bit be a bit more consistent, and he probably knows that more than anyone. So, um, and Luke Dowse, Luke, Luke Dowse is one for me. He's very un, underrated in the sense of what he brings to our club. He uh, brings a little bit of difference in his personality. He's a bit of an up and about person, like we have Mark Bittab's coming on soon. Um, but we need players who can do the pressure, but also kick goals. And I think that's where Brian Myers has come into his own. He's, he's he does it both ways, and um, he's done it pretty well. Hopefully, Gaz, the old body, is uh, travelling all right and uh, we get to see the very best of him because um, these shorter quarters uh, showed um, when, when he played GWS that how important he is when he has the one touch um, and how skillful he is. I am told by one of the players that in a the match simulation type training or match scenario type training, a few blokes were fumbling, it was a little bit messy and... Just to get Cats fans excited, <laughs> Gaz for about 15 minutes lit the entire place up, kicked four goals and just was like he had his own footy again. And even the likes of Dangerfield and Selwood and some of the greats were just sort of standing back going, what, what is this? <laughs> this bloke's just taken over an entire session and wound the clock back briefly. So hopefully he, as you said, Stokes, he's sort of quarters, five games less for the season. Maybe Gaz just hits hits the season and hits the finals fresh and and in for a big year. That would be great to watch. Big year coming up for, as you said, Gary Rowan, finding that bit of consistency. Sam Menegola is another name who is in there, you'd think, comes in the bench and plays forward and a bit midfield as that versatile type player. Big year for him to really lock that spot away and become crucial. Um, Jed Buse down back, if he gets an opportunity, him and O'Connor are those smaller types of defenders along with our mate Zach Tui. So some, a big season coming up for a few of those players to really lock away spots and make it their own and grind minds to back up what was a terrific, uh, I know it's his second year on the list, but first AFL season. So um, real challenge. I think they'll get that opportunity early, but they've got to be able to lock that away. It sounds like a pretty good team to take on the Hawks. I, uh, I don't mind the sound of that. It'll be a big clash Friday night, won't it, Scotty? Well, it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a great game to start off with. But as the coach said, I mean, the unknown. I mean, yeah, they've had, what, a four-week preparation really together. The, the players look physically good. Like, he's really happy with how they've come back. But it's the unknown. We don't know how they're going to handle it. You know, 15 minutes in, suddenly it might be, oh, we're not as ready as we are or we're flying. I mean, it's it's the great unknown of this round. I think it's a, the, the common theme coming out of most clubs is we, the unknown, but also the fact that they don't have their n- normal time to prepare for games. Like, I think we're going to see a pretty sloppy um, brand of footy for the first couple of rounds because the fact that the players just don't have the balls in their hand. Um, and I think you say that, well, they're professional athletes. They should have it in there all the time. But you, you know, the good players um, and, and the great players, the difference is how much work you put into your craft. Like, you know, Lee, and if you don't, if you're not able to do the extras after training or do the extra weight session or the extra recovery, it brings everyone back to sort of um, level playing ground. So it's going to be really interesting to see how um, the season plays out in that aspect because they just don't have that time to be able to train. 
and, and that's where. And by that too, Stokes. Sorry, Scotty. It's, no, you're right. It's not just we're not just talking. Um, you know, home in isolation, throwing the ball up against a brick wall and catch it. Yeah, that that'll sharpen you and you know keep you reasonably sharp. The great ones do that craft work and do that extra training at phenomenal intensity. I've still got these these vivid memories of Joel Selwood's extra craft sessions he used to do off like a rebound net against Nigel Lappin. And it was as brutal as games of footy sometimes. Nigel and Joel would go at each other so physically and Joel, if he even fumbled one footy, would be so angry at himself and Nigel would take it as a win that he was, he'd forced Joel to fumble. That was extras on top of the way Joel was training um, with the rest of the group in the intensity trained at. That's what really made him great. That, as you said, that craft and that commitment to the craft and doing the extras, but doing it at a level that is higher than most other people in the competition do it at. No, oh, yeah, incredible. And I also think this is where the home ground advantage, like if in familiar surrounds and things are a bit slobber, it's got to be a percentage little factor that you feel a bit more comfortable, even though things in the stand is not where it's at. There's a connection there. I think that's going to be massive for the Cats having, what, three out of the first four at home? How many, how many, how many Geelong people do you reckon are going to be outside the fence? <laughs> like, well, they'll be inside sooner than rather than later, the way it's going. I've just got a funny feeling there's going to be a lot of people walking around the outside of Simmons Stadium. Just trying, to, just trying to feed off the energy, you reckon? So I think so. Know. I've got a funny feeling there might be a few out the, out the back. Well, oh, 2,000 no people allowed in Adelaide Oval now for the showdown yeah. and crowds allowed in the Sydney and GWS games. So we are well, I think taking it... little steps closer. Well, it makes sense. I mean, if restaurants are open, why couldn't the corporate facilities at a football ground be open? That's what's happening in Sydney with GWS. So I would have thought within a couple of weeks, they'll start to slowly eke in, you know, 500 people to 1,000 and away you go. It'd be interesting to see how clubs go with that because if you're going to do the corporate stuff, you're going to be you're going to piss off a lot of supporters and a lot of yeah. a lot of members. So it's going to be really interesting to see how clubs handle that because it's uh, it shows you where where your um, loyalty lies. I think. <laughs> I like it, Stokes. Yeah. Those well, who pay to, the money, Stokes. All right, continue. Yes. Let's get to a couple of questions <laughs> before we're going to take a break. And Mark Blitzales is going to join us in just a second. Uh, this one, oh, Stokesy. I think we've, we might have touched on this in previous podcasts, but Jerome asks, which players went the hardest in intra-club practice matches and nearly caused punch-ons like <laughs> in Adelaide? A bit between, was it Frampton and Hardigan? I think we've yeah. seen those players. Some good little haymakers getting thrown. There were lots of spot fires like those, weren't there? Um, yeah. Chapman and Johnson, Ling and Johnson, everyone and Johnson, um, Joel Corey and... Most Jimmy and most uh, yep. rookie uh, hurting people. Rookie getting sent from the track by Bomber <laughs> because he was going to hurt everybody. That's probably one of the best things I've ever seen. I, I, uh, <laughs> the fire you, great, but when 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 a player gets kicked off the training track because he's training too hard, that's when you know um, you know when things are good. <laughs> I, I also remember when uh, Tim Callan. I'm sure a few of our listeners would remember Timmy Callan, wonderful bloke, and uh, and just. I had no regard for his own safety the way he played, almost too courageous for his own good. Kept going back with the flight and crashing into teammates. The bomber Thompson warned, warned him once and he went and did it again because Tim only knew one way to play. He just went back with the flight again and took out an entire pack again. And bomber just came storming towards him and just sent him off, pointed to the interchange <laughs> bench. And there, for the rest of the session, poor Timmy Callan's just sitting there as this lonely figure on the interchange bench because he was going too hard at it and being <laughs> courageous and he was in trouble. <laughs> uh, One of the great guys of the footy club, Tim Callan. <laughs> yes, yeah, I agree, agree. Uh, this one from Kevin. We're going to get to Blitz in just a second. I've seen his screen pop up. Does the shape of Cadinia Park make it hard to develop good wingmen? None since Riccardi, Kevin says. Do you agree, oh. Stokey? Uh, I don't agree. I think the wingman um, is about smarts. Um, I played on a wing for the you know two years, um, and it's about being um, uh, your decision making in a game. Being quicker does not necessarily mean being faster in the sense of your your leg speed. It's about the the thought process and how quickly you can come up with decisions to either go back to help out your defenders or move forward to be able to come in. 
and get involved in the movement going forward. So I don't necessarily think the shape of it. I think um, uh, particularly um, we've got Mitch Duncan, probably one of the best wingers in the, in the conference. Mm. So that's probably, um, probably answers your question. But I don't think it's necessarily the shape of games or grounds. I think it's probably to do with the player itself. Absolutely. Thank you to all those people for your questions. Keep sending them in. We need them uh, coming in throughout the season. I'm sure there'll be lots to talk about from Friday night's game. Got a couple of guest requests too from our listeners. Oh. M- Mooney, Stevie J and Joel Corey. <laughs> yes, we would like all of the well, above. We're, we're going to get to work on them. I'm not sure about Joel because you actually have to speak on podcasts. So that's going to be an interesting <laughs> development. Yes. I'm not sure if we want Stevie Stokesy because we've hung out so Stevie. much. I'm like, we bag him too much on this thing. We, I'm scared of Mr. <laughs> Normie himself. How about that no. um, that viral Twitter thing that happened? Was that last a couple of weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Ordering yeah. the coffee. He's he's next level, Stephen. Norm, yes, correct. We'll get to work on those ones. Uh, Mark Litzars is coming up in a second, but before we go to the break, big thanks again to our sponsor, Panther Tires, and also to GMHBA, the game at GMHBA Stadium this week. It's important to stay healthy while staying at home. That's why GMHBA have partnered with Kiza. If you're a GMHBA member with extras cover, you can access telehealth or in-centre physio from the team at Kiza with no out-of-pocket expenses up to your annual limits until September 30. Waiting periods and sub-limits apply. Search GMHBA Kiza for details and stay healthier at home. I need to get a Kiza session in for my back. I'm getting a little sore at the moment, so I will be back in there to get a bit of work done. So thanks to GMHBA for their support. We're going to take a break. Mark Witzarves coming up next. Welcome back. Great to have you with us on to the final bell brought to you by Panther Tyres. Mark Witzarves has been promised and as he always does every week for the Cats, he's delivered. He's on our little Zoom screen now. Blitz, welcome to you. Good morning, guys. Thank you for having me. Pretty much, I'm going to hand you over to Stokesy. Stokesy wants to come at you hard. He, he doesn't like tall people at all. He certainly doesn't like tall people who can run as well as you. So I think, just beware, Blitzy. He, Stokesy's coming for you. Just before you start, Stokesy, and get after me, I was at training the other day doing a tackling drill, and me and Hawkey were talking about how good a tackler you were. You'd get him pinned at the boundary, go really low, pick him up like a rugby tackle and dump him over the boundary line. Don't try and butter me up, Blitz. As I'm coming. Stokes, you fire away. What have you got for the uh, the great man? No, how, how have you been travelling in isolation, mate? I mean, and coming back. I mean, it's obviously very uh, unfamiliar times. Um, how are the boys travelling at the moment, and uh, what's the, the feeling like at the club leading into two two days times game? It's been great, mate. Um, wrapped to to be back, a part of it all. Iso was. Uh, tough at times the last couple of weeks, especially when there was a chance that we were um, possibly able to return to training and then uh, if you push back a week, if you push back another week, you'd see light at the end of the tunnel, but it wasn't coming. So the last couple of weeks were tough, but we had constant contact with all the teammates, which is really good. Everyone was throwing in funny videos. Hawk was hosting a quiz. So as a team, we found things to do to, to get by and, and everyone came back in, in really good shape. And from there, we've We've been able to do two or three weeks of really solid training and we start Friday, so it's exciting. You strike me as someone, Blitz, who's permanently in good shape, but <laughs> just tell our listeners the, the difference between being really fit like you are and, and still would have been throughout the isolation time and being genuinely ready to play in an AFL game of footy. What have you had to do over the last three weeks to get your body right? For me, Lingy, it's been the contest, all the contest work, working with Harry and the defenders on the one-on-ones, the, the physicality. Obviously, we weren't allowed to train with anyone but one other person in isolation, so, and we weren't allowed to go near him. So you got the running and the skills and the fitness in, but um, it's one thing to lay a tackle, get up, get tackled, um, sprint over here, really game-like specific stuff that... The first week, the whole team was gassed and thinking we're unfit, but it's just getting used to that, that physicality again. And um, I think we've had a few good sessions on that um, with limited prep. And, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a great game Friday. Blitz, we spoke earlier a bit about the unknown. Like, it's unknown about how you guys are going to be and unknown about Hawthorne. And is that how you feel? You sort of, we're not quite sure what's going to happen? Yeah, I, I presume all 18 teams, Scotty, have said 
they've trained well in the last three weeks. They've been really, really good. So, yeah, it is unknown. It's it's a great result that we're we're at home and we've been able to practice on our ground and and looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, it's we're going to come out and see what they throw. We've looked at some round one vision, but it was two and a bit months ago. So, it is a lot of that. It is. Hey, please, I just want to, obviously these guys are here to talk footy. I'm here to talk a little bit of shit. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about um, AFLX. Um, so my dog, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys are in, uh, no, but uh, the AFLX, uh, I was part of the, the guys who put it together. Um, and my job was to look after these idiots um, at the Crown Casino when they decided to have a drink together. So I put these the four teams together. And I'm thinking, I've got these boys under control. I've got Luke Hodge here who sort of, you know, we're trying to, you know, Shawnee Berger. And we've got these kind of guys who are trying to, keep under control. Then all of a sudden, look over the bar and there's um, about 60 shots. And the one person I thought I could, could rely on and count on was Mark, Mr. Blitzards over here, that he'd be under control. But he's the one at the bar ordering 60 shots. Can you just give us your thought process of what you were thinking? <laughs> um, and you nearly know, threw me under the bus. I nearly off my job. Well, I didn't pay for the 60 shots. <laughs> um, Did I pay for them? It was well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was well organised. Um, AFLX was fantastic, and the four teams did have dinners beforehand, and then we caught up as a as a whole collective. Um, I really enjoy those events because um, it's a chance to play with and against and get to know people that you wouldn't teammate uh, teammates and players from other clubs you wouldn't normally associate with. Um, funny story on that night though, um, danger at about 10 o'clock at night, we'd had a few drinks, dinner, Paddy was like, the AFL's done a really great job in organising this, um, got up in front of all four teams, really great job in organising it, which they had, um, let's just go out and play well tomorrow, give the fans a really good showing, um, and, uh, let's, let's respect it and, um, let's finish up in the next hour or so, um, I'm going to go to bed and, we're looking, Norris, Paddy, thanks, mate. <laughs> and there are a lot of blokes standing up and be like, to the break it on. <laughs> gone, but no, mate, it was good fun to be a part of it. Um, and it was very similar with the Origin um, this year as well. Uh, just to be able to play with and against players that you don't normally see playing together, it was something really, really special to be a part of. You did so such a good part. job, Stokes. It only lasted a year, didn't it, AFLX? Oh, we, well, that, that, we had a budget and they blew it out of the, the house that night. Um, I probably think that I probably wish they could take that money back right now. But um, my job was to get them on the bus at 10.30 and the security guards and the, and the bus driver were sitting in the front calling me going, where are these bloody players? And I remember just looking at them and going, there's no chance these guys are getting on the bus. I rang up Steve Hocking and said, look, I just don't think there's any chance of these guys getting on the bus. <laughs> so I went home. I went straight, straight to my room, turned my phone off because I didn't want to hear it. And then... All I hear was this numb nut was bloody best on ground. <laughs> and, um, all the players were talking about Mark Blitzer at breakfast. So proud of you, though. <laughs> That's what I would have done. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. So it's your fault AFLX was ever there, Stokesy. It was your no, baby. I, I wasn't part of the decision. I was just told to keep control of these blokes. Um, which you can imagine was... Um, did a good job. Yeah, I did. did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm unemployed at the moment. <laughs> Uh, Blitz, what's he, what's he, when he is at the club, I know he, he isn't at the moment, but when he's there, what's he actually like? Oh, he's a ripper. Stokesy, we're talking about, yeah. Yeah. No, I got, no, Come I on. Oh. No, nah, he's... How often would you be in the gym, Stoker? Oh, every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's good. He's just good the club. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy having these guys around the club. Um, Stokesy, Mac, he hasn't been in either for a while um, with all this happened, but um, it's just good to just have a, have a bit of banter, say hi, you're going to get a cheeky smile out of them. And, um, they're great for the young blokes too, to share a bit of wisdom. They come on track quite often, um, give their advice as well. So um, they do their own role at the club really well, but they're still footballers that are trying to get us better as teammates. Blitz, speaking of roles, I've just got to get this one out there just for the listeners. Oh, yeah, please Defender tell me mate. the right answer. <laughs> full back? Defender. Please. Full back, full back. Oh. Nice. Oh, yeah. who's, the like, who's the likely matchup this Friday night? 
Um, oh, there's a bit going on with that. We'll wait and see their final lineup, but probably Patton and O'Brien um, will be ones that I think Harry and I will take. Um, those two are the sort of the main keys out there. I haven't. Um, they're going a little bit tall. They're going quite tall in their back line as well with McAvoy playing back there. Uh, we'll wait and see their final lineup, but it'll probably be those two, I'd say. Have you oh, played just... on the big general before, Johnny Patton? Patton, yeah, I played one game against him in GWS. Um, he's he's like playing against Hawk. He's very strong, massive framed. You don't want to get caught square behind him too much because he'll just be able to box you out and hold it, hold you out. Um, so for me, it's probably using my feet and moving off him at the right times and trying to make him defend. Well, it's just with your flexibility, which we saw crept in again late last year. I mean, do you have a preference? Are you you're loving being a fullback? I know players say it's good to have a release now and then, but can we declare you want to be a fullback permanently? Yeah, Scotty, I love it. I enjoy it. Mate. <laughs> it's awesome. We've got a great bunch of guys down there. I'm representing the Misfits at the moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got your own kit. That's fantastic. We've got our own kit, so it's it's good. We're a we're a bunch of weirdos, and we all fit in. So I enjoy, I enjoy that. Um, I've said before too, coming from a different background, I find playing in the back line um, a little bit easier. It's the game's right in front of you, and I can read the ball a bit better than say on the wing or if I'm playing for the midfield. Um, I mean, in saying that, too, I, I play any position I can get a game at, but. I enjoy full back and it's, it's what I've trained full time for in the last three years and something I want to continue to develop. Do you, do you ever go to the, I know, it's, I know we don't want to be um, pointing the fingers here, but um, that's what we do <laughs> in the show. But do you ever go to the coaches and say, hey boys, you probably cost me an all Australian. Uh, <laughs> you cost me a best and fairest last year. Has that conversation been brought up? <laughs> no, no, I, I haven't thought of it like that at all. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, you, just, I'm just pointing yeah. out the obvious. Uh, now know. that you mentioned it, yeah, I'm filthy. <laughs> this is uh, him and all Australian. It'll go down pretty well. There's, we had conversations at the end of last season, heading into finals, about um, ruck wing back. Uh, a lot of the leadership group, a lot of the senior boys were involved, and all the coaches. So everyone had their opinions, and there was, we did have difference of opinions. Um, but once the decision was made that late in finals, I was going to play on the wing. Um, we all bought into it and the whole coaches and all the playing playing group were happy with that and we, we played it that way. So um, it didn't pay off, but it's something that I probably don't regret because at the time it was part of my decision as well and, and we all agreed on it. The ruck spot still feels like it's very much up for grabs. Uh, Darcy Ford got the opportunity round one, Ray Stanley's the other one there and Obviously, others who are still waiting and, uh, and trying to put their name up as well. And Asava in the forward line, um, they can come in there at different times. My feel is Darcy Ford gets another opportunity. I know you possibly can't give too much away, but when you've got a... I know, I know he's not young from an age perspective, but experience perspective. How important it is for an inexperienced Ruckman to just get a big chunk of games to let him find his feet? I think it's huge, Lingy. It helped me early days. My first game was because um, Josh Walker, Hamish McIntosh, Trent West were all injured and I was able to play ruck for the first month and sort of then from there cement my spot. So, um, yeah, he's been awesome, Forty. He's really pushed Reese this year because he stepped up. Uh, a lot of sessions he's gone past Reese, which has forced Reese to then respond. So I think those two have just been able to compete and hopefully step each other up to another level. So um, I think both those Ruckman will be playing a lot of footy this year. But it's good to know that behind Reese we've got 40, who's been really consistent, and behind 40, we've got Reese. So, um, yeah, it, it could be a nice little one-two combo. Let's talk about your, um, your leadership, um, Blitzy. I think you're probably one of the next in line to be the captain of our footy club. Um, with Joel and Danger and Hawk, you know, obviously a little bit older, um, the, the two later have, have families. Um, how important is it to have someone a bit different in the sense of the way they go about it every day? I mean, you're a very, you're a very boys boy kind of the type of person. You get along, along with everyone at the football club and you have a unique personality to be able to blend in with all the different um, dynamics in a footy club. How's it, how do you feel that the leadership side of your, your game is, is coming along and how important that is moving forward? Yeah, it's a good question. I probably base my leadership on relationships 
the most. Um, but I think it's one that comes naturally to me because I enjoy everyone's company. I like to think I'm a people's person. Um, and I'd, my philosophy is I'd probably do anything for my teammates first and foremost over anything. Um, uh, protect them, help them, try and improve them. So, um, yeah, I'm probably one for my teammates, which um, I think is a, a strength of mine. What I'm trying to learn too is now to give, uh, I'm trying to improve my feedback giving, whether it's uh, harsher feedback. Um, so not just have friendships with them, but respect as well. So that's one thing I'm, I'm trying to learn um, and learn a lot of. Joel's really good at Scarlo back in the day. was really good at, I saw your podcast a couple of weeks ago that Scarlo's bloody good at giving feedback, but it's something that the defenders as a whole are trying to bring into their game and, and myself as well. So um, I think our strength is we've got in our leadership group a lot of different leaders. Mark O'Connor's been awesome and he's not afraid to share his opinion and his voice being first year in the leadership group. So um, from a captaincy point of view, I, I haven't thought too much about that. Um, Joel's been awesome. I can see Joel doing it for the rest of his career. Um, it is something that would be, would be nice. I'm not sure whether I'd be up for it or not, but it's something that I need to keep working to improve because Joel is going to finish up one day and there will be that spot. So there needs to be three or four or five candidates that can, can step up um, and lead the club to continue its success. Well, with that sort of attitude, Blitz, I think it would be in very good hands if it did go into yours. But uh, as you said, the importance of having numerous options and even those who don't get the official title being strong leaders is um, where the strong team comes from. So it's, uh, it's great to hear you speak like that. We're going to have to end it there. Really appreciate your time, Blitz. Good luck for Friday night. We can't wait for footy to be back. I'm sure you're even more excited than we are just to get back out there and play against the old rivals at the home ground, GMHBA Stadium. So good luck Friday night and thanks for your time. Awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Bitsy. Thanks, Blitz. Great to chat with Mark Blitzarves there. Two-time best and fairest winner at the club. We're going to wrap it up there. Just before we do, again, big thanks to our sponsors, Panther Ties, GMHBA, but also Deakin University. Digital is in Deakin University's DNA with 40 years of experience in distance and online learning. Discover why they're the number one Australian public university for overall educational experience. Premium, proven, love. Study online at Deakin. Thank you all for joining us again this week. We're going to talk a heap more footy next week because we're going to have games to talk about. Who's played well? Who hasn't played well? The Cats have had a big win over the Hawks. Is hopefully what we're going to be discussing. Thanks to Blitzy for uh, coming on. We'll get another guest on next week. Enjoy the footy. Enjoy the week. We'll see you again next week.